Hello? Yeah. I did. I did push the button. No, there should be somebody back there. Okay. I'll, I'll wait. He's trapped in the bathroom. That's it. Okay. You can just yell all the time. It's a good thought, for sure. Push all the buttons. Push, push all the buttons. <laughs> Start talking. Say again? Uh, testing. One, two. Talking about PowerShell. <coughs> Are we good? No. Yeah. Oh, there's a switch on the mic, too. Yeah. Oh. Probably is. <laughs> Sorry. It's a little thing to count. I think it just got bored. You also have a break. That happens. All right. Let me try. Oh, its battery is dead. I, I can yell if I need to. By the way, if you already push the button, that one is recording. I did push the button. So I'll push it again, you think? No, no, no. Stop so it. all I'm saying is that whatever you say is going on the YouTube. Oh. Hi. <laughs> Now I'm going to stay quiet for a bit. Why are you so high maintenance? Uh, I'm worth it. Okay, okay, Ashley. There we hey. go. Now push the button. Woo! All right. I, I already pushed it. Okay, don't push it again. Oh, right. my God. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, hey, everybody. Thanks. Uh, oh. Hey, everybody. Uh, wow, that's really loud. Push it again? I, I pushed the button, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, my name's uh, Jason Morgan. I'm going to talk to you today about um, kind of the considerations and planning around large-scale monitoring uh, with scripts, right? PowerShell, you know, in our case, but, but generally deploying a script-based monitoring system of your own kind of creation. Uh, so a, a bit about me. Uh, like I said already, my name's uh, Jason Morgan. Um, currently, I'm a tools and innovation engineer for Verizon, and specifically we're in a managed service provider role. So we resell monitoring and management of data center solutions to uh, enterprise customers, right? <clears throat> uh, for about 18 months, I was a tools and, in a, or tools and monitoring engineer, and about all I did was write monitors uh, that needed to be deployed uh, in response to new outages and new issues that we found in environments and that we couldn't put out through our uh, standard monitoring channels. Okay, uh, you can find me on Twitter. I contribute some stuff on GitHub, and I blog occasionally. Um, so, before we get too far, I want to know uh, how many of you are doing like some sort of script-based monitoring in your environment. Right. Awesome. And that's that's exciting. Um, <clears throat> I want to know if these kind of issues resonate with you. Right, like, do you run into uh, instances where you've got duplicate code you have to deal with, uh, where you're trying to deploy monitors in a standardized fashion? Um, you have challenges around, uh, you know, maintaining or changing alerts that you have, maintaining or changing alerts that you have out in the environment. I'm just going to hold on to the podium, keep that from happening again, um, and then missing, missing alert conditions because your monitor failed. Right? Has, has anyone had a monitor fail in production? Yeah, I, I have, for sure, a bunch of times. And so that's why I, I kind of wrote this. Now I'm going to use a couple terms uh, kind of interchangeably just to, to warn you. I'm going to say script, monitor, and function. And I typically mean the same thing. Not that I think they're all the same thing, but in this case, the uh, function-based monitor, or script-based monitor, whatever you want to call it, is, is the same for the purpose of my talk. Uh, so uh, the first, the first thing I want to talk about when you're deploying monitors at scale or script-based monitors at scale is why, why should you do it, right? Like why not just use SCOM or Nagios or or whatever? The answer is it's going to be very situational, right? For me, I didn't I didn't feel that SCOM had the flexibility to, you know, allow me to deploy scripts for monitoring, right? And and, and do it rapidly, right? Like we can't in my environment, I can't load a management pack every time I want to add a new script or change an existing management pack without going through change control, right? Whereas I was able to deploy 
you know, within an hour of an issue, I was able to deploy a new script that would monitor, uh, monitor whatever new alert condition we'd found. So that's kind of why you should do it. And then when you're, when you are writing scripts, like what are the, what are the requirements if you're going to be able to do it like at scale, right? Like in a multi-domain or, you know, maybe you've got a DMZ and your, your regular management domain or, or whatever it is, right? Like how do you, how do you make this work, right? So the, the first consideration, um, or the first requirement is, uh, you have to be sure your monitors are efficient, not just like it's efficient code and it's efficient to deploy, but also that you're not you're not double collecting data. If I'm reading a from reading a log file, like especially a large log file for for one condition, right? I'm not having another monitor that's reading that same log file for the a different condition, right? Like I have to if I'm going to scale a solution, right? I have to have uh, each data piece of data I'm collecting be collected once. Right, or each thing I'm monitoring be monitored once. Um, you have to make it easy to audit, right? Um, we just had a, a great talk about testing in, in PowerShell, right? And you know, you need to be able to test and, and audit or monitor your your monitors. Right? You have to have a system that does actually do regular regular auditing of your monitors out there. If you deploy uh, a script-based monitor and it stops working, like, you have to be the first person to know. Like, it's a really bad talk with your boss when after you know, your monitors failed and you didn't catch something and they're like, why? Right? That's super uncomfortable. Um, and you have, to have, you, have to, you have to have a system so it's easy to deploy or adjust your monitors across multiple domains, okay? Uh, so this is going to be kind of a, a rehash of what I just said, right? But the challenges that you deal with uh, in multi-domain or even single-domain environments, where you've got lots of lots of uh, hosts that are going to be running your monitors, is uh, how do you scale? Uh, how do you repeat stuff? Right? How do you deal with failures? Um, what do you do with data collection? Like you have to have an you have to have an answer for this in your environment, right? Uh, and and data retention. Uh, where do you put your alerting logic? Right? And uh, how do you handle notifications? Uh, so I want to talk a bit about writing, writing a monitor itself that you're going you're gonna to deploy. Um, <clears throat> things that you want to add in for every single, every single monitor is tests. Right? And I, not doesn't have to be a pester test. Right? Pester is, pester is great. I, I still haven't learned to use it. Right? So I write you know, custom tests for my for my monitors as I deploy them. Uh, it's really great to have snippets. You're going to find that you do, you know, certain monitors again and again, just kind of in different ways. Like I did, I spent three months just writing log file scrapes, right? And so I built a log file scrape snippet. So every time I was going to deploy that, you know, I just go, you know, new log scrape and then go tailor it down to my my particular instance. Right? It saved me time, allowed me to to deploy it faster. Okay. Um, the other thing is don't write monolithic scripts or don't write monolithic functions. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be hard to change. It's going to be hard to troubleshoot. And uh, you know, you're going to have lots of duplicate code. Uh, so I write, I like to split my monitors into like different stages and different functions. Like, I typically will deploy a module with every single monitor that I write. Right? I've got a function for doing data collection. I've got a function for storing data, or I call it to an external module for storing data. Um, I've got a, a different, different function that's responsible for actually running the logic against the data that I, I've collected from my, uh, from my collect script. And then again, a, a different logic for doing, I say alerting here, but I really mean notification, right? Like having a distinct notification channel. Also on all your, what you're, what you're gonna end up doing is you're gonna have hosts that run your script-based monitors, right? And every single one of those hosts is going to have to have, ideally, the same kind of root monitoring module deployed. So I can call from any monitoring host. I can call my, you know, send notification function, right? And they all go, they all, it all looks the same, right? So I'm com coming from a common, <coughs> a common module, and I'm not defining send notification in every single monitor, right? Because that's really painful to do, having having done that, right? It's not. Not fun to fix. Um, so once you've got kind of the general principles, right? Specifically, 
uh, when I want to get a new a new monitor in the environment, who does like a file copy like themselves? Anybody? I, like I, that's how I started. It was file copies and then registering stuff for the task scheduler. That was the the phase one, right? And it's it's hard. And it's hard to do once you know I add a, a new environment or a new domain and a new monitoring post, right? I've, I'm going and running you know 30 new tasks in my task scheduler and copying a whole monitoring folder, and it's it's tough. So building an automated an automated deployment mechanism, you can use DSC. Actually, use DSC really effectively to copy a monitoring a monitoring folder and maintain it across multiple hosts, and then also to register the appropriate jobs with the task scheduler. So you can ensure they're, they're in place when you need them to be. Um, you know, so I'm not telling you that task scheduler or DSC is the way to go, but you have to have a plan for how you're gonna deploy, how you're gonna deploy a monitor with a command and not like a, a manual process, or no, a, not a human involved process, and how you're gonna handle the scheduling. Right, there's a bunch of stuff out there. This task scheduler, I tried Jams. <coughs> Jams is great. It's a super easy way to deploy and, and schedule jobs and know how they're how they're working. Uh, Cron, if you're going to be on a Linux host, right, so you just have to have that planned out in advance before you you go too far down the the monitoring journey, right? And then removing them, right? Like I, I take when I write monitors, I add a config file to every single monitor that tells me what its dependencies are. Uh, what its alert conditions are, and then when it should expire. How long is it is it relevant for, right? Because maybe you're going to have a temporary a temporary situation where you want to be checking something, and you don't want that monitor hanging out, taking up processor time, taking up resources after you're after you're done with it. So, being able to eliminate and audit when when scripts are out there right, is is super handy. Hey, what are your thoughts around <coughs> deploying monitors? Compared to having them, let's say, pull from a file share or something central. Uh, okay, so Lee, Lee just asked about um, what, what are my thoughts on deploying monitors via some sort of push versus having them pull uh, pull themselves. So, uh, like I use a pull mechanism, right, using using DSC. So the agent will go ensure that it matches this this file structure, this monitoring file structure, and then I have a job running to sit there and look through my monitoring file structure and register jobs that aren't registered, right? Uh, so I think, it's, I think it's a great idea. I think it, it doesn't matter entirely as long as you have a system. Like better some system than, than none, but pull-based in my mind is always the, the best thing. Like I like having you know, my nodes be responsible for their own configuration. Does that answer your question? Oh, awesome, thank you. Um, now uh, a testable mechanism. So when you build your, your deployment, channel, whatever it is, right? You need to you need to test that your your hosts under management have the right stuff and that your deployment mechanism is still working. Right. So you have to you have to write it in a way that, that takes into account that you're gonna need to audit it and makes auditing simple. Uh, so if it's config files with every single monitor, which is what I did, or if it's if it's some other mechanism, maybe you all update a web page, like that's that's great. But you just have to have that planned out when you look at this. All right. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, actually, running running data collections. This ended up being uh, a, an issue that I had a lot of a lot of trouble like getting organized around. Right. And the the thing that allowed me to turn it around was separating out collections from evaluations. Right. It it, it hit most with log files. Like I'd be reading, uh, especially in the I, was, I monitor a lot of call centers, right? So they would generate these huge log files about what was happening, right? I'd be reading a log file for every single alert condition, uh, you know, again and again and again. So I'd have hosts that were basically constantly reading log files, getting into conflicts with each other because one would have a lock on it and the other would be trying to get it. Um, so uh, splitting out your monitor into, you know, into separate functions allows you to split out that collection and have one piece collect, you know, maybe I've got 20 patterns I want to match against in a single log file and I've got my collection function running that'll do that on its own without impacting the rest of my, my monitor. Um, in general, when you're, when you're collecting data, sorry about that, uh, you want to plan first that stuff's going to fail, right? People are going to move, people are going to move dependencies, IPs will change, 
you know, services are, are, gonna, are gonna get modified and you're not necessarily gonna be aware of it. So uh, test, like have explicit dependencies with every monitor you deploy, right? And keep them there somewhere in the monitor that they can be easily tested. Either you've got a specific test function, or again, like I, I listed out in the config file, and I go test all my dependencies for every monitor, and then I send notifications once, once a dependency is gone, right? Because uh, I would just expect when you're, when you're doing this that you're, you're gonna have stuff move and you're not gonna be aware of it. Uh, clearly indicate failure events. So figure out what your channel is. Is it uh, an email? Is it a trap? Is it you know, a log file? Whatever, right? But clearly indicate failures uh, and do it in a uniform way, right? For, for all your management traffic. Uh, and then obviously check that on a regular basis. Either audit if it's a log or again, have, have alerts pushed to you. Um, try and stay simple and stay modular. Like have every, Every monitor do something as, as simple as you possibly can. Like I've had instances where I had to collect, you know, events from multiple log files and then correlate the check-in time of a call in a couple different places. And that's, that's really hard when you write it into a, one big script, right? But if I've got a couple collect scripts checking the data, then I've got an, it being stored in a database that I can go check later with another job. It's, it's hard, but it's a lot easier to fix any one part of that than to try and fix the, the whole thing at a single time. Uh, you know, try and stick to one script or function and one job. That's, uh, that's gonna be the biggest theme of this talk is, is one script, one job. Um, use a common, a common module for all communications outside of a script. So anytime I, I store data or you know, commit data in some way, I'm not calling a function local to that module, or local to that monitor, I'm calling a root monitoring module. I'm saying, hey, store data, right? And then this, this came in really handy, right, in, in our environment. As we went from, you know, storing data all to a, a file share, just as a, as a flat file, to storing it into a database, to now storing it into, we've got a performance management appliance that's got a web API. We just dump data right in there. And I never had to change a single monitor, right? I changed the uh, root module function for storing data, and it, it, it went, right? There was no, uh, I didn't have to go modify 500 individual scripts, which is gonna be a huge waste of your time. Um, same thing with notifications, right? Think about how you're gonna, how you're gonna do your notifications. If I wanna, if, you know, some, some alert messages need to go into management, some alert messages need to go to my 24-7 desk, some alert messages need to go to my, uh, like myself or the other tools administrators, right? I've got a, I've got all that logic built into a notification script, right? Or a notification function. It's not, it's not living at the individual monitor level. Um, and again, the, the idea is to, to save time. Um, Insulate scripts from changes, parameterize all your dependencies, and list your dependencies. Uh, be, be really explicit and be auditable with your dependencies. I know I've said that before, but it's, it's pretty important. Um, keep your functions, keep all your external functions general, right? And, uh, and be sure that I can change the underlying functionality in, in your root or external communication module without having to modify scripts. And that's a, a long way of saying basically be sure that if I change my notifications, I'm not gonna screw up my monitors. Or if I change my monitors, I'm not gonna screw up my notifications. Uh, storing data. If you're, if you're doing a lot of monitoring, like you're gonna store data, right? That's a, or I guess you're very likely to store data with time, right? Uh, so the, the first rule that I, I would suggest is try and avoid storing data if you don't absolutely have to, right? Because it's hard to manage. Um, and then when you do store data, be sure that you've got a mechanism that you're calling for doing that storage, and be sure that you're, you're building a retention policy. It, it's easy to forget, right, that you know, I'm writing data to a flat file, I'm like, great, I've got 200 gigs of space, I'm, I'm good, right? But you forget about that for two months, you know, you're gonna run out of space, or you could run out of space depending on what you're doing. You're gonna find once you start storing data to disk, you're gonna store more and more and more. And, uh, and having, a, having a retention policy having an external function for doing that storage, and then being able to audit right, what you're storing and, and that your retention is correct is gonna be really important. Right? If you're doing an RCA, you know, and you're supposed to have two weeks of data and you don't, 
Right, then they need to account for that. Wow. Uh, sorry. Um, that, was, that was loud. Uh, I shouldn't have yelled to start that off. Uh, MBA will swap out your storage mechanism. Oh, hey. How's it going? Okay, uh, so just got a question about uh, reading log files and what's like what's kind of a, an effective way to do it? Because uh, specifically, get content can be can be really high on memory usage and not super not super fast. Get content has a, a read count parameter that'll like take in everything, right? And it'll read up the whole the whole log file, and so it makes or it'll read everything at or it'll pipe through everything at the same time. I think uh, so. You'll get like a bigger object, but I use a I use a .NET class. Um, is it system dot file system .io dot file the read all lines? Yep. Is a read all lines method that I I ended up using to basically get get everything at one time and then just run it through a a, a, a big regular expression matcher. Okay, so the, the question was around, uh, thank you. Uh, the question was around uh, SCOM and distributed applications. And inside a distributed application, you can model like a larger, uh, a larger app, whatever it is, and show its dependencies so that when you have a failure uh, with a, a particular component in an application, it's easy to identify like when you know, a drive is full, what application that matters to and what that impacts and help you drive, drive down uh, what is it mean time to resolution? Uh, so the answer is like PowerShell is a, a scripting language. So you can really build anything you want, right? But uh, when you're thinking of when you're thinking in terms of script-based monitoring, um, that's like you're building a, a, a bigger application if you're trying to do distributed apps. What I what I would recommend is that as you think about your alerting channel, right? You think about how do I how do I get that back? My my issue that I found from a script-based monitor and ultimately have that reflect inside a distributed app that I built in SCOM, right? So what, what we did, or one of the things that, that this, this mechanism allowed us to, to enable was, you know, we originally had SCOM feeding into a service manager instance and no real channel for the script-based alerts to impact the health of a distributed app, right? And then now our, our script-based alerts feed into service manager, right? And impact, uh, impact the objects inside the distributed app modeled out in service manager. So I'm able to impact that health state um, from something that I got out of a, out of a script. <laughs> but the way you, you keep that flexibility, so I can go from you know, sending emails directly or sending tickets in another system directly to dumping into service managers, again, you keep a, a base reporting module and you just change where that alert goes there without changing the underlying monitors. Did, did that answer your question? Uh, yes, the, the last question, I'm sorry. No problem. Okay, so the question was uh, basically, can you have have a, have I written anything or used anything for doing an SMTP, SMTP message without an SMTP relay? And the answer is no. Uh, did traps uh, bought a module for sending traps from PowerShell? So we did a lot with traps for a while, but um, 
then moved over to uh, SMTP, and then ultimately back into uh, back into Service Manager. So, and that answer your question. Thank you so much. That was great. Um, so back to back to storing data. The the kind of takeaway is uh, have an external function for doing your your data storage, right? And be sure that you expire out data, right? And that you have a policy for that, and that you audit it, <coughs> so you know that the data that you said you're going to have, you actually do have. Uh, okay, so uh, notifications. So a lot of this stuff, if, if people are familiar with SCOM, these are SCOM type terms, right? I, I ripped it off pretty strongly uh, when, I was, when I was building this. Uh, define notification channels and keep them external to your monitor, right? So I've got a, a root module which basically is you know, out alert. I've got a function there that's out alert. And internally that, it has logic to process, hey, this type of alert goes to this type of people using this type of channel, right? And so some things go out via SNMP, uh, some things go out via email or SMTP, and some things go out uh, directly to um, either a web API or just to service manager, right? And all that logic, all that logic is kept out of the individual alerts and stays in this, this kind of base module. And that's, that is a personal preference for me. Like you don't have to, like, you don't have to do any of this, right? But, but that's not necessarily the, the best way. It was the, the way that worked best for me. The other thing I, I did was, or I tried doing was adding alert channel, basically subscriptions to the actual config file that I'd ship with my monitors, right? It, it ended up being harder for me to scale that. Well, I guess I didn't like it, so I, I didn't keep doing it, right? But I think, I think there's a viable method there. Just be sure that you've decided what, how are you going to do it, and that your your notifications are centrally managed in some way? Um, you have to be able to discriminate traffic based on monitor types. So again, either I'm shipping a, a config file that tells me who cares if this has a problem, or I'm maintaining a a repository of my alert messages and their you know subscription channels. That makes sense, probably. Um, and uh, that's about it. I want to go and talk about testing real quick, and it relates pretty strongly to, to the next part, which is flexibility, right? Uh, I've, I've said it before, obviously, but plan for failures. Your monitors are going to fail. If you're using scheduled jobs or scheduled tasks, especially scheduled jobs, by the way, they're just going to stop running periodically. I have no idea why, but they will. Right? And if you're not checking, like, that's your fault, um, right? So, so verify. Uh, and and plan. Don't don't trust anything when you're when you're doing monitoring. Monitor your monitors. It sounds esoteric and weird, but you you have to do it. Um, you know, writing tests around your monitors and knowing that a, a monitor is working when you make a change is really important. When I have to when I have to change my regular expression on a log file scrape, uh, how do I know that I didn't just break? my whole script, right? I know it because I have tests out there and because my, my monitors are going to alert me. So I can deploy rapidly. I can deploy a monitor rapidly because, I've, or I can make a change to a monitor rapidly because I've got a test in there that validates that it still behaves in the correct fashion. Um, and then, <laughs> I've said it once or twice, right? Audit the monitors uh, that you have out, out in production. Um, so, uh, oh, hey. So, what's the, what's the easiest mechanism for monitoring a monitor if you're doing it in a scripted way as opposed to, you know, if you're not using SCOM or anything like that? Because there hasn't been before that. Right. So, if you're using a scripted method where you're, you're building that all yourself almost, then what's the best way to monitor the monitor? Right. From, from the central side? You know, you're, 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 you're yeah, so um, there are a couple things. I have an audit job that runs on every, on every monitor. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, the question was, um, what what is the best method for monitoring your monitors, right? Like a lot of management systems that you get, like come with you know built-in mechanisms for checking that, that the right monitors are running, that the right files are distributed. So how do you, how do you do it, right? And I use uh, I basically would would layer in audit jobs. So every every automation server, every monitoring server would have an audit job that would run. Uh, on a regular basis to verify that the monitors were running on the schedule that they were supposed to run and that I wasn't seeing failures, right? And then uh, because of the, the structure of the environment I worked in, we had customer domains, which were effectively 
kind of walled off, and then a, a central, or actually a bunch of central management domains. So that in addition to a monitoring job that lived on the individual monitoring hosts, right, I also had uh, a management, or a job coming from the management domain to go validate that everything was running smoothly on each individual monitoring host. So I just added some layers of, uh, I guess, some layers of monitoring on top, right? It's not perfect, but it was pretty good. So, so you kind of went through that and basically did that task run and success, you know, checking for success on it? Check, that kind of stuff? Checking for, uh, it's, so there are a bunch of things. So one, one job would monitor or would audit dependencies, one job would audit storage, one job would audit uh, errors from the, from the jobs, and then one job would audit that the other jobs are still occurring. Um, and then I had a, a central job to go in and check out basically all my jobs, ensure that I'm not getting errors uh, on my monitoring hosts. Yes, please. How do you uh, validate that a monitor captures the error that you're designing it to catch, like a disk being full or something? All right, so the question is how do you, uh, how was I validating or how do you validate that your, your monitor is getting the right alert condition, basically? Um, you know, it's just test when you write your monitor, right? Like, so you can, you can mock up something like a full disk or, or whatever. I'd have, I'd have dummy log files for when I was actually doing my, my log file tests. I ensure that, like, I know how many, know how many instances of an error out there. So I'd be like, all right, did it catch it? That sort of thing. Does that answer your question? All right. Sure. Uh, if, like, if you're, if you're comfortable with, with Pesto, I'll, I'll get right to you. If you're comfortable with something like Pesto, like there's a lot of a lot of functionality in that mock call that you can use, right? And then if you if you're not, you can you know export CLI XML objects and sit there and import them and test against that. You know, it's it's pretty time consuming though. I would, I would try and get familiar with Pesto. Hey. With any of these layers, do you use something like uh, SMA so that you can like in your in your alerting you can call from a, a script like sitting on a box that you're deploying or remotely? Uh, okay, so the, the question was, uh, like in this, in this particular system, in my case, was I ever using something like SMA? And I said, I'm gonna do a follow-on, which is, do I think it's a, a good idea? Uh, so SMA or, or another automation server will allow you to, to do scheduling to, to kind of keep track of how jobs went. And it's got a lot of that stuff packaged in. So I've never, I never used it for monitoring or orchestrator, right? But I think it's a, I think it's a great idea and a great, like a great addition, right? Having a lot of that functionality already baked into the product is going to save you time. So if you've got an SMA instance and you can put your monitor jobs in there, right? And you can, you can call them. You've already got auditing. You've got uh, some amount of data retention being kept in. You've got a scheduler right there that you can, you can take advantage of. I would definitely recommend it. In in this case, it was a very uh, like it was it was a no external tools type deal, right? And the the reason I used a lot of script based monitors is because our change process was too inflexible to allow us to uh, make uh, make modifications to a production monitoring system, right? And yet it totally omitted script based monitors, so you could just do whatever you wanted there. Wait, did I answer your question? I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Um, just curious, what's the largest number of uh, endpoints that you're monitoring, and, and uh, also do you post some of your functions up on GitHub? Uh, I definitely, I post most of my, I share out a number of modules on, on GitHub. I don't share out any of our, our particular monitoring functions. Unfortunately, they're uh, proprietary for our organization. Uh, the most hosts, uh, you know, we've got, we've got five major customers and anywhere from anywhere from a thousand to five thousand servers in each in each customer environment, and a typical customer environment is you know two to five individual data centers on their end. So it ends up with monitoring hosts. I ended up typically running about twenty at a time. Uh, so I had like I I kind of designed this system to compensate for how do I manage twenty monitoring hosts? Because right, I was just going a little nuts there for a bit. Uh, did I answer your question pretty well? All right. Um, so stay flexible, like stay loose. Uh, be ready for change, because stuff's gonna change. Be ready for stuff to fail, because stuff's gonna, gonna fail. 
and be ready to add new tools, right? Like a, your suggestion about SMA was a great one, right? Like if you can, if you can can be flexible about adding, you know, adding an enterprise class tool to this sort of solution, then you're gonna you're gonna improve it drastically. Um, you know, we changed out. You know, over time we changed from writing data, data that we stored to a log file, then to a, a SQL server, and then now we've switched out to using this this web-based performance management tool, which is wonderful, right? And uh, it's called Sev1, by the way, if anyone uses it. Um, and that all that was able to change without impacting the, the monitors that were actually deployed in the environment. And um, you know, it's it's been great. So stay flexible and use new tools, right? Don't don't fall in love with anything that you write, because there's always going to be better products and better softwares and better better software, and better ways of doing things. So, okay, well that's uh, that's actually all I have. Is, uh, are there any questions? Yes. For your data retention, are you doing any trending on it so you can identify uh, patterns that occurred over time? Yeah, we absolutely are now. Uh, when it was a, when it was originally put in, oh, I'm sorry, let me repeat the question. So the question is, for data retention, was I doing any trending on it? And originally, like when it was in CSVs, like not really, like I try and grab up data and, and build some measures over time, but it was kind of limited what we could do. Then with SQL reporting, you know, I, we didn't have anyone to spend time doing SQL reports. And now that we put it into this performance management system, we absolutely do trending over time. So we can take, you know, I can take a, a database query, see how many objects I return, see how long the query takes, and dump that right out to this performance appliance. And I can view how that looks over time on a graph. And I can actually alert when it gets out of it's standard deviations. So, absolutely. <coughs> Anything else? All right, so the end, I'm pushing the button again. Thank you very much.